What we have here is a CNBP uh, 100 control unit. This is one of our smaller portable units. These traditionally come as a 120 volt unit. But what we're going to go through in this video is how to convert this to 240 volts. Uh, it's a couple more steps, uh, very detailed steps that we're going to take through uh, this video. And uh, just make sure you pay attention and we'll show you how to do it. So first thing you want to do is you want to take, remove the front cover from this control, uh, control, control pack, which is located underneath the panel on your spa. And you want to flip it over. You want to familiarize yourself with this wiring diagram. So this wiring diagram shows you over here. This is the board. This matches the board. That's right here. Okay. And you want to pay attention specifically to this section right here. This is factory conversion to 240 volt system and field conversion to 240 volt. So this is how to convert this, this uh, board to 240 volts. So if you get stuck, always refer to this section right here and read through here, okay? All right, that's the first thing. So we're gonna look at our board and we're gonna first start by looking at the terminal blocks. This terminal block here is already wired for 120. So this is the part your electrician is gonna need to do. You're going to want to remove the current wires in there, okay? All right, move your, your neutral and your, uh, your hot. Remove your ground over here. So uh, this allows you to now pull out the, pull out the 120 volt wire, okay? And your electrician's gonna wire this up for 240 volts. And when they do that, you wanna pay attention because the location of where those wires are gonna go is gonna change. So you see number one is your neutral or your white, two is your black, three is your red. On 120 volts, it's different. Three is your neutral and two is your black. So you wanna make sure you follow this wiring diagram here for when your electrician is hooking up the wires, the 240 volt line, to the actual terminal block itself, okay? So follow this one for the terminal block hookup for the electrician. All right, now we're looking at this. We're gonna go through the steps now how to convert this to 240 volts. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to find is the F3 fuse. Let's mention it right here. This F3 fuse is located right here on the board, which is, move this apart, right here in the center. This fuse right here. This fuse needs to be replaced with the fuse that's actually located on the back of the board. So with your new board, you'll have on the back of it located a little fuse. So we're gonna just slice this a bit to get access. I'm gonna pull this fuse out. This is, they look almost identical. This is a 0.1 amp fuse. Um, and the one that's in here is 0.16. Let's verify that. Yes, 0.16. So you wanna replace this small fuse, okay? So, you can pop this fuse out. You can also use needle nose pliers. Pull this one out. Again, this is the one that's used for 120 volts. And we're gonna put this back in this little pouch on the back so we don't lose it, okay? Then we're gonna take the 0.1 amp fuse, slide that right in the fuse holder there, okay? There's step number one. Next step you wanna look at is right beside it, these jumper pins here, okay? This section is located, we're gonna look on the wiring diagram. This is right here on the right over here. It's gonna talk about what we're gonna adjust right here with these jumper pins. So if you need to reference it, how to, how to adjust that here. These jumper pins right now are set up for 120 volts because these white jumpers are located on the outside. So what we're gonna do is actually take one off, just gonna grab it, and put only one across the center two. Okay, we're gonna jump the center two pins, leave the other two pins open. That's gonna convert it for 240 volts. Okay, we now have an extra uh, pin here, a jumper pin. We're gonna just put one of the leads on the one at the bottom and the other one not connected, so you don't lose that. 
All right, so again, you're only jumping the two middle pins with one of these jumpers. And this one, we're just gonna put one of the empty ends on the end here, so that it's not jumping anything else, so we don't lose that again, okay? So that's number two. Number three, we're gonna be looking over on the right-hand side. We're gonna look for the J31 jumper pin, okay? This J31 jumper pin, another very small pin. This is a little black one here. It's located right here on the right-hand side. As you see, this one's located, it's only across one of the pins and it's located vertically. We're gonna to wanna to take this off and put it across, jump it across both pins. All right, make sure that's pushed down and secure. So that's the J31, you wanna jump both pins there instead of just the one which is used for 120 volts. All right, next step, we're almost there is to look at the dip switch bank. All right, this dip switch bank, which is located right here on the board, has a whole pile of tiny little switches. And these little switches, you need to adjust um, one of the switches in here to allow your high speed pump and heater to operate at the same time. So if you're as long as you're installing this on something that's 40 amps or higher, you can adjust this, this uh, switch. It's gonna be number two, so from the bottom up, you want to count one, two, and move the second one, second pin to the left. Okay, so it's only the second pin that's actually, the second switch, which is actually going to be on. Everything else is going to be to the right or off. All right, so we've adjusted the fuse. We've adjusted these uh, 120 volt jumpers. We've adjusted the J31 jumper. We've adjusted the, um, uh, the dip switches here. And the last thing we need to look at is the power going into the pump and the um, uh, and banks one and three. And this is referenced, just if you need further reference, right here in this section, okay? So what we're gonna do first is you need to remove the jumper wire that's connecting bank number one. If you can see it here, see, see the number one there? Bank one, and if you look down here, bank three, okay? This jumper wire goes from the pins on uh, the, the connections on bank three to bank one. And we're going to simply wiggle it back and forth and remove this jumper wire. And we're going to stick this on the back side here in this little uh, in this little pouch. So in case you ever need to convert it back or you need this jumper wire again, You've got access to it, okay? So we don't lose it. Now you've removed the power from one to three. The last and final step is you need to make sure your pump, which we'll start with back here, located at J46. This jumper wire here for the pump manages the voltage going to the pump. So J46 currently is connected to J10, which is down here, so J46. Up here, you follow this wire all the way down. It connects down here to J10. That's the wrong spot. That's in the 240 volt spot because this is a 120 volt pump. We need to actually remove that pin from bank three. If you need help, you can always use your needle nose if it's a little stubborn. Okay. You want to put this back up into the slot that you just took the other pin out of, which is J, the other jumper wire out, which is J4. So one of the pins in bank number one. I'm sorry. All right, so that's now in there nice and snug. So again, just to refer what we did, we removed the wire here from J40, the wire here from J10, from the jumper wire for 46, moved it from bank three up to bank number one which will now feed 120 volts into pump uh, into pump one. All right, so all of these to combine together now allow you to operate this control pack as a 240 volt uh, control system. If you have any questions, contact us on our support page or uh, uh, leave us a comment in the notes and we'll, uh, we'll be sure to help you out.